Okay, so a question we get asked a lot on our clips that we put on social media from the podcast is what actually starts the club back? So we're going to do a little demonstration today. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, we're just going to kind of walk you through kind of what we're kind of talking about when we're talking about this tautness and the pushing and the twisting. Um, And we'll talk about it with like the lead in the trail hand, right? So, all right, cool. Enjoy. All right, so we'll start with, how about just set up? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and take your set up there. Yep. Which grip should I do here? So I'd go strong. Start with strong? Yeah. Okay, cool. So strong lead hand grip to start. V towards the trail shoulder. Keep your lead hand there. So the first thing that um, we're going to do is a strong grip demonstration of what the lead hand should be doing in the takeaway. And with a lead hand being strong, there is approximately 45 degrees of extension lead wrist to start. So when we go back... Show us what that means. So the angle here between the lead wrist and the top of the... Um, so that's here, like that? Yeah, exactly. Got it. 45 degrees of extension there. So and the pinky is like on top of the grip like correct. we talked about in the pod. And with, if you just leave the club there, we'll, we'll move the hand back. So I want you to push down and just feel like your lead thumb is pointing back like this. There you go. And that's going to be his takeaway position. Still cupped. So basically he's getting... To where he's maintaining 45 degrees of extension here by keeping that push pressure and so if he goes and set the club mm-hmm. good you may have your trail hand so the trail wrist is going to do the same thing it's going to get put fingers straight out you're going to get 45 degrees of extension in the trail wrist by the time the takeaway is complete as well mm-hmm. okay so the trail wrist should have 45 degrees of extension for all three grip types not yeah. just the strong grip right 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 and i should be starting with like how much? Probably about 20 degrees of yeah, extension so to begin from with? Yeah, like straight down, once you extend the wrist back like this for the, and then turn it, you're going to have approximately 25 to 30 degrees of extension to start. So really you, don't, you only have to get about 10, 15 degrees right. of added extension to the table. Gotcha. So that's that thing that we talk about in the podcast where we talk about, we're trying to get the image of your pushing with your palms, but your fingers are being like pulled back yeah, exactly. with like those like rubber bands right. like we've talked about before. If you hold before. your hand like trailing straight out away mm-hmm. and just flex it back, like most people can get to 45. You went way past 45. Right, right. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty flexible. So then from there as you continue back, it's like somebody is flexing the fingers more back. And what we're going to do is, yeah. depending on you have a neutral um, or weak grip, the flexion that you have like for a weak grip is going to help you like um, oh. basically extend your wrist more back. It's like that's how the rubber band's being stretched more. Got with it. neutral grip, you're like pushing with a little bit of, you know, flexion. And then with the strong grip, you're pushing with extension of the lead wrist and maximizing pressure with the trail as well. Got it. So in, just, in like when you have the strong grip too, mm-hmm. when you're, you're twisted this way, which then also like kind of, twists and gets you a little more extension as well right because it kind of like kind of makes it gets easier it more it's already going in that direction yeah more so yeah. okay cool all right so we're going to do strong grip though just because yep. we like we'll the strong grip and, and we'll feel like it's easier and yeah weak. right mm-hmm. so okay got my nice 45 degrees of cup and lead wrist yep. lead thumb on the trail side of the club yep. really important right yes if he keeps the pinch pressure here um that keeps that fingerprint of the thumb on the top trail side of the club to where when he levers the club back it really allows you to create torque with the thumb if you don't keep your pinch and the thumb slides down the club Mm. you're like losing all the like uh lever stability spring effect you're going to be able to create and there's no stability either yeah no stability like yeah he can hold the club now and i can push down on it and he's good yeah try moving the face too like you can't can't, but if i if i lose that strangling if i thumb. lose that right now it's, it's like, like I can oh <laughs> yeah place, right? the thumb is very important yeah so thumb is extremely important for stability right. for leverage yep. everything yep. so Support. which is why we like the strong grip again because it just gets it like into a more nice locked position, lock position. More on top of that lead hand correct yeah, yep mm-hmm. you know, just like that got it good okay cool so go we're just gonna the, go and plant the trail wrist down there just a oh, trail wrist yeah, too yeah. okay we'll so how are we doing that so we're so doing trail palm to lead thumb knuckle okay yep and in then, under, coming underneath, right? Yeah, like if you think about the seam of his hand here, um, basically like if his fingers were straight out, he wants to try to feel like he's bringing this palm flat to the other palm. So it's like, mm. you know, if the lead hand's like this, you want to feel like the trail hand's coming on to the club, the same angle. And then once you feel like that little bit of pushing against the lead thumb knuckle mm. with the um, palm pad of the trail hand, right? Yep. That's going to solidify your triangle together. And then once you curl the fingertips, then the claws are fully locked in place. So that's that like visual we used that one time where we said like the pinkies on top and the trail palm is basically like yeah, sh- like, like a straight out like a shooter finger right. at a 45. A lot of people have problems too is that 
they get their trail hand too under the club sometimes, and it's because they don't have their pinch pressure properly. Got like it. if you hold it like the lobster claw, you can get way under. <laughs> but if you keep the pinch and you get way underneath, it just doesn't even feel right. Like you have you're losing functionality of being able to hinge and everything. So it's yeah, because then you it's don't like go beyond the trail um, ear, right? And like shoulder, basically. Yeah, because we're talking like we want you to be here at the takeaway, but it's like if you start here, it's like yeah. how are you gonna it's like right. how are you gonna go from like there to there? Yeah, it's we'll like, say that. Anything yeah. beyond the trail shoulder with the V of the trail hand is too much. Okay, so I got trail palm against lead thumb knuckle. Yep. Got my pinch again, that thumb placement yeah, with the trail curling, hand. Yep, curling the index finger underneath of the trail hand. Um, Always further down the grip, right? Yeah, exactly. You don't want the trail thumb to start sliding down to where it gets, um, you know, where that trail index finger starts curling. Under yeah, the we see that much. a lot. Yeah. Very common. Exactly. And the problem is that, again, you don't have as much ways or as many ways to torque back when you get the the pinch and create that notch Boom. once Just once he starts push pulling on the handle like this yeah, stability you can feel it loading in in between this pinch and the lead hand so that's where we're like advocates of understanding that <laughs> each hand has an um you know an active role and they work the same amount it goes back to um, the stability like what we just right. said there with the lead thumb right. with having the stability with the pinch there yeah. you have the stability with the same thing here exactly yeah so that one's not getting torqued technically more than the other yeah exactly right. okay cool so lead arms on top trail arm is under underneath right yep boom all right okay so we got the setup down now. So, so let's start, let's take the club back now. So the first thing is, you know, again, we're keeping, um, we're trying to get to 45 degrees of lead wrist extension and 45 degrees of trail wrist extension by the takeaway. So to do that, all he's going to do is he's going to push down against the handle and go straight back until the club head gets just outside his trail foot. From there, he's going to allow the club, as he pushes down, the, in, the index finger of the trail wrist is going to pull up and back just a little bit to get the club shaft to parallel to his toe line. So, I mean, we think about how much the club is actually rotating from here to here. It's very minimal. We're talking maybe five degrees. And I, again, I'm still, my trail palm but is still against lead thumb down. knuckle. So it's very important that he keeps the cup in his lead wrist and he's pushing down here. He's pushing down with his trail palm against his lead thumb. And a couple references are the butt end of the golf club should be approximately five inches outside his trail hip when the club is parallel to the ground at knee level, mm. okay? If you're up here higher, let's go up higher, mm. you're probably not pushing down. So most amateurs, you're gonna see Very this common. kind of a take yes. where there's no downward push pressure. Floating or hands, we call this. Way inside, yeah. Or you'll see it kind of going to a, like vertical, right? But if you push down, get it down to knee high, there you go, mm -hmm. good. Then from there, as he goes back, he's gonna be able to then create the proper pivot point here at about waist high to transition the club from the takeaway to the half three quarter and full backswing. But and the what's, idea is- what's creating that transition? So, you know, we have the 45 degree of extension with both um, lead and trail wrist, right? Right now, so, yes I do. So we're going to go from 45 and we're gonna think about trying to go to 90 degrees of extension. Um, so incrementally from here, let's say if we go to a half backswing, we're going to increase a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're at approximately, I'd say, uh, let's say 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then as you continue back, you're gonna go to like 75, three quarter. And then from here, as we get to that full back swing, he's gonna have closer to that 90 degrees. And really- Still pushing still with pushing the lead down, hand. Still away with the hands, right. So if we go back to the takeaway, he's got the downward push. That little bit of rotation that we talked about here in that takeaway, that is already getting the club head to get the natural kind of twist to the top. For some golfers, it's easier for them to twist than others. So if you have to add a conscious twist with the extension of the wrist, you're gonna feel that the lead wrist stays extended and you're just gonna kind of roll the knuckles of the lead hand just a little bit back towards yourself like this. Mm -hmm. And that naturally gets, it's like the range basket over the arms or the shoulder drill. We'll mm -hmm. give you that one here soon. Mm -hmm. But this is it right here. That little twist effect, right. again, really gets the club perfectly. Like on loads it. Right. And now he has that perfect extension with both lead and trail wrist. Right. Right. Yeah, that trail index finger is really hooked back. Lead thumb still has stability like I had right. in the takeaway. Exactly. Still pushing against the butt end of the golf club. Trail palm still connected to lead thumb knuckle. Right. So basically still the only pulling. thing that um, changed from address to the top is an increase in extension. Right. A little bit of, um, you know, internal Clockwise rotation, rotation with the lead wrist yeah. and, you know, Trail wrist um, external rotation, so yeah. Right, and that's what, so yeah, okay, I got it. So that's why we like the strong grip too, because it just makes it easier for us to feel that push down yep. sensation, right? 
and the pivoting and then point the pivoting. Of, of allowing the club to get back on plane more like this. Like that little bit of rolling effect with the cup is a very easy thing. Like right. There's no tension building on your hands and arms yeah. really. It's a very natural movement. It is very natural because it's like it's a, like it's where your the direction the club wants to go already because exactly. your V's of your hands are already kind of like setting right. it up to go that way. Correct. You don't want to like fight your V's. Right. So <laughs> right. What you gotta watch out for is when we had the twist and we'll talk about this is making sure that your sternum stays um, left to where your weight stays out over your lead foot while you do this because sometimes um, students will kind of like start getting the twist and then it starts pulling them off the golf mm, ball. Very so common. It's important that, you know, we keep Feel that lead, lead shoulder, shoulder. over the lead yeah. leg uh -huh. and then that supports the right. tilt so that you can get the, you know, support the twist basically. Correct, same correct. posture, right. Yep. So let's go to the, um, the neutral grip. Okay. So the V now is going to be more at his trail ear and then the trail hand is going to be wise point also at about the same point, right. So we talked about before we're at, we're at about you know let's say 25 30 degrees of lead wrist extension at the dress now he has i would say only about maybe 10 to 15 but when he goes to the takeaway his idea here is that the lead wrist is going to have um it's going to be in a flat position so there's really no extension or flexion conscious but the trail wrist should try to be getting to that 45 degree mark and again butt end outside mm. the trail hip approximately five inches so that's what we call width Right. Yes, yeah. So if that, he that the, where we're the talking hands about like that. this and his take where the hands are in line with his hip. Too narrow. There's not enough width, right? So as he goes back, unless he does some type of manipulation, <laughs> he's going to come in too steep to the ball. So it's important that we stretch that pressure back. So if we imagine from a dress, let's do this real quick. We just set the club pressure right here and then stretch it back five inches outside, mm. his trail hip. That's really blending the two things together. Mm. But mm -hmm. we want to do that all in one sequential motion right to there yeah see this right. doesn't mean talked about enough um when you look at like common golf instruction right now i see the all see this all the time we talk about it in the podcast a lot but everybody says when you start the club back that you just want to basically keep your hands passive and just rotate, and rotate. right it, how, when when are you rotating you're not rotating yet right like we're not really rotating takeaway, it's it's not conscious yeah it's really just taking the pressure back, like keeping the grip together, doing what we're talking about with the pushing and pulling, uh -huh. keep the triangle, like move the triangle as a unit, yeah. and that naturally moves your shoulders. And right. I, same in like putting, we'll get to that some other time soon, but the idea is that that's what keeps the triangle intact. And then it's not like when you take the, um, like if you put the club into your sternum, mm. like you know that classic the, Yeah, the club and sternum drill. So if he uh -huh. bends forward, takes it back to the takeaway. You can do this, right? Yeah, it's but again, just like... like the problem is too is look how high the club is, right? right? He hasn't broke his wrist yet. And he could break his wrist now and then like lever the club up and then like get that, you know, idea. It's just not effective. But this doesn't have to be like the idea of what it is. It's like feel it in your hands themselves. Yeah. And like don't rely on some train aid and just try to get the feeling of that first move like we talked about. Pushing. Hands go back over the trail foot. Yeah. Everything straight back. Then from there, then your appropriate twist is going to happen depending on your grip type. And an important thing too, and we talk about this a lot, we'll go back to the setup, yeah. is when, if I were to draw a line right here, yeah. when you look at all tour players, when they take the club back, their hands actually go below this line yeah, to start to swing. See, it's like a right? little slight like um, oval shape. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you'll see it kind of drop down and then it comes back up a little bit. But if you took a line and drew it across the like the knees between there and the hip line, mm -hmm. the majority of pros are right in between the two or closer to the... And that's like, never talked line. about. Right. It's like Because people aren't thinking about... Like, they're thinking about more of the idea of in and out, like where the club's at, not about how low it is. Right, but that's the key though. The low is what every right. tour player is like doing like really well. Yeah, like exactly. But when you do all these things that they're talking about, like, oh, just rotate. It's like, okay, well, my hands aren't going to go below that passive, line. Again, if they're not pushing or doing something consciously, like to support the connection, and then also what's going to happen in the transition. Like, you don't want to be passive with your hands here. And then, then what do you activate do? Activate your hands. Yeah, like they should be doing something the whole time. They should be doing something right off the bat, <laughs> right here at the setup with right. the claws. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to get them working right off the bat. That's right. So, so, so all right, back to neutral grip. Sorry, yeah. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I, I love that visual of the hands going below that line to start. I think it's a really right. good visual for people. Right. So actually, we can go right into the uh, wheat grip. So this is where uh, things are a little bit different. Oh yeah, we already did the yeah. Okay, so wheat grip. So I'm so straight up and down is on the club. Be basically, yeah, more at like his nose. Yeah, lead lead hand mm -hmm. straight up straight and down. Straight up and down. Trail hand should still be at trail ear. Oh, I hate the way the wheat grip feels. It's okay. So I'm gonna flip sides here real quick. Oh, okay. 
So the only difference with this grip type with what we're doing is the lead wrist is going to basically use a flexion, right? So it's gonna go underneath. So take your trail hand off the club for a second. So his ob objective here is- the, the thumb is a little longer too, which is okay, yeah, let's right? Turn this a little bit more. There, okay. there you go. Mm -hmm. So right here, he's gonna try to get to approximately 45 degrees of flexion to his takeaway. And what's and that? He, show that, so, show so that, that for the people. that is the under, like the angle here between his knuckles to his uh, back of lead. And I'm trying to do this so the club face doesn't get too open. Correct. Correct. So that is more of the set pressure and he's gonna blend that with, um, I would say because the trail hand's more at the trail ear, a little bit more neutral than mm -hmm. the stronger grips, that it's gonna get about approximately 35 to 40 degrees of extension as well. So go ahead and put the trail hand on there. We'll blend the two. So we're gonna try to get 45 degrees of lead hand flexion. There we go, good. Just like that. Yep. Five and again, outside. five inches outside. Yep. The same width for every grip style? Yep, every single one. Okay, got it. Yep, perfect. And then from there, then I do a little more vertical. So, so the, the lead wrist is gonna stay in flexion as he adds his vertical hinge. Um, some players will basically keep the lead wrist relatively passive to the top from here, but in the downswing then, they'll add that little bit of added flexion to get to the 90 degrees <laughs> to help the shallowing. Got some it, got will it. get it, like they'll start actually twisting it as they get closer to the top. So they'll actually oh. start twisting it here. Now they can just hold and then push more back. Which we see with Rom. Rom yeah. is like kind of like neutral, almost feeling in terms of how much he like bows his wrist, neutral, then he really cranks really it, it, cranks yeah, it, cranks it, boom. It's more boom. of a preference of you know, what you like, right? Right, yeah, it's all up to you. But the key is, is that you have to get if you're using this pressure, correct. <laughs> yeah, whether it's flexion, um, flat lead wrist, or extension, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter. You have to push, push. or flex and stretch to help the uh, trail wrist connect to the lead wrist, but mm. also then to correct that, um, or to get that proper rubber band feeling as we transition the club up mm. right from the takeaway. Right, right. Uh -huh. Right, because if you're not stretching the rubber bands here in the takeaway, you're gonna have a hard time going to the top and not maintaining connection, Got especially it. As we're coming back down, because one thing too that's um, a huge key in the swing is let's just do this real quick. Go to your uh, takeaway position. With the weak grip still? Uh, let's go uh, to like strong. We'll go back to strong for this one. Sweet. <laughs> so, one of the biggest things is that the takeaway, the way that you do it, is basically setting you up for your pre impact position, right? So, if you go out of your takeaway position, so we'll get the five inches of width. Good. Pushing down. Good. So the club should be very uh, close to this position with where the club head is relative to his hands and how low, right? Very low. The hands and the club are, right. So as, let's just say we'll go up to the top and back down. So when he gets back here to pre-impact, the only difference is instead of the butt end of the club being five inches outside his trail leg at the takeaway, the butt end of the club is now approximately four inches away from the golf ball, okay? If, let's just say if it's in the middle of his stance. Or we can just say the butt end of the club is now it's um, even with the, the right side of his trail hip yeah, yeah. or trail uh -huh. leg. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So then from there. Still got my same connection here with the hands. Right. And Always if, want to keep the grip together. Correct. So if you think about what that difference of, you know, again, five inches outside or we'll say just inside trail leg, he is pushing back, driving with the same kind of pressures, right, to maintain this lever of the club head up and above his hands that he set in the takeaway. Mm. So it's like you've, he's levered his hammer in the takeaway. It's like half the lever. He's increased it depending on where he wants to go to the top. And then from there, he's just holding it by pushing. And now he's going to deliver it by keeping the extension, the trail wrist, and then whatever the lead wrist is going to do, depending on the grip type, we're doing that trail arm going from bent to straight, keeping trail wrist cup. And then he's trying to get the six inch scrape. And then there's the follow through. So oh. here at post impact, basically the parameters here are very similar to the back the swing, swing and pre-impact. And pre -impact. Right. I got it. Right, those are like the three main positions. So it's like parallel, parallel, parallel. parallel. The yeah. three parallels. Totally. All right, cool. So yeah, you don't have to use your body. You don't have to do all these yeah, crazy the things. Club, like basically just get the club where it needs to be. Yeah. And understand how you're getting it there with the claws. Yeah, exactly. It. It's like, we're get the hands. The grip type and correct, get the hands, simple. get the handle, and get the club where they need to be at every right. single spot. If you can do that, that's your job. Like, that's right. your so only job. You do that, and you'll start building a proper golf swing and see results. It's right going to help you so much. Absolutely. So, yeah, hopefully this helps. Yep.